I'm James Taylor, here to talk about everyone's favorite subject, UV mapping. First, let's talk about what UVs actually are. They're a way to convert a 3D object, our model, into a 2D shape, like a texture map, so that we can paint on it. And we do that by cutting up our 3D surface, unfolding the pieces, and flattening them out into something that's paintable. And clothing is a great way to think about it. It starts as flat 2D sheets of fabric, and then we cut it up and stitch it together to create the 3D shape, which is the body. And clothing also helps us with seam placement. We can place the seams of our UV mapping in the same locations that we have seams on our clothing. So on the inseam of the arm, down the side of the torso, on the inseam of the leg, we're going to place all of our seams in generally the same location that we do for the clothing that we're wearing. And this means that anytime you get lost trying to place a seam, just look at the clothes you're wearing for reference. Okay, let's start unwrapping our UVs. I'm going to start doing things the manual way first, then we'll look at easier methods later. I'm working symmetrically here, that's why I only have half the body. And I'll start by grabbing the front faces on the arm. And then in the UV texture editor, I'll hold shift and right click and choose planar map from that menu. And Maya will automatically project UVs from some direction that it chooses at random. And we'll do the same thing on the back of the arm. The problem that we have is these shapes are distorted. So we need to go to shift and right click again and choose unfold UVs. Unfold UVs will automatically shape our UV shells into the least possible distorted shape that Maya can come up with. And this is great. Now we just need to eliminate seams. So we know that we want the seam to be under the arm, but on the top of the arm, we don't want there to be a seam. So we're going to stitch our two UV shells together along that top seam. And we'll do that by selecting the top seam, and then in the UV texture editor, hold shift and right click again, and go to move and sew. And we'll see that that automatically stitches everything together, and we can use unfold UVs again. And now we've got this very nicely shaped UV shell that has minimal distortion. And we check our UV distortion with a regular pattern like a checkerboard. More on that later. Now we're going to unwrap the torso and we're going to do it the exact same way that we did the arm. We're going to make multiple selections of faces. We're going to use the planar map in the UV texture editor. We use the unfold UVs command and that will give us nice, generally distortion-free UV shells. So I'm going to use the side of the torso as my seam. I'll select those edges and use Move and Sew UVs. And we put that seam under the arm because the arm will hide it. After I have stitched it together, I can use Unfold UVs again or another tool, the Smooth UV tool. It's in the same set of menus. So I'll activate the Smooth UV tool with my UVs selected. And then a little yellow box will pop up and I can just um, click and drag on the unfold to relax my shape. Now I do have a problem with this little face sticking up here. So when we have issues like this, what we can do is just grab the offending face and planar map it. And then I'll rescale it and move it sort of near the hole that it corresponds to. And I can select the edges in that area and use move and sew. After I do that, I might want to use unfold UVs or smooth UV tool to polish things off. And I'll check my UV distortion by applying that checkerboard material again. Now one thing we'll see here is the size of my checkerboards is different between the two objects. So I'll scale my objects to make the checkerboards about the same size. This is important because it ensures that we have even pixel density between the different regions. And that just means that our textures will look a little bit more cohesive. All right, on to the leg. Same process. I'm grabbing half of the legs faces and then in the UV texture editor I'll planar map it. Then I'll grab the other half of the legs faces and planar map that. So we're using the same tools over and over for this mapping approach. Now I want the inside, the inseam of the leg to be where the open seam is so I'll grab this outer center seam and use my move and sew. And then after I've done that I can unfold now I'll do the foot, and the foot I'll start by just grabbing the top faces and planar mapping that. I do need to grab these two edges along the back and then use shift right click to do cut UVs in the UV texture editor. And then when I unfold, I'll get a better result. 
in the bottom of the foot is also a planar map, and I'll use my smooth UV tool to just relax those faces so that I get less overlap between the toes. In some cases, our automatic tools won't be able to help us, so we'll have to manually move our verts to remove overlap. And I have the same issue with the top of the foot. After I unfold it or I smooth it, I get a lot of overlap between the toes, and we'll just have to manually fix that. And with the hand, I'll handle it the same way that I did the foot, where I'll grab the back of the hand and include the size of the fingers and then planar map that. And once again, I'll have to position my UVs manually to ensure that there's no overlapping here. I'll do a planar projection for the bottom of the hand, the palm and the bottom of the fingers, and I'll project the thumb separately as well. And I'll need to project the back of the thumb and the inside of the thumb separately to ensure that I get a good unwrap. Once I've got those all separately projected, I'll use my move and sew tool along the edges of the thumb and I'll merge these together so that it looks kind of like a butterfly on wrap of the hand. So that leaves the head and the neck. I'll project the neck as a single planar map and then I'll grab the edges at the back of the neck and use my cut UVs to split them apart. And then I'll use my unfold UVs to lay out those UVs but I'll see that they actually came out upside down. So I need to select my UVs and flip them vertically. So I have my mirroring tools at the top here. When I flip it over, I see it turns red, indicating that it's oriented improperly. I can just flip it the other direction. It goes back to blue and we're in good shape. For the rest of the head, I'll just grab the entire thing and do a single planar projection. And now I can cut just straight up the center of the back line and use my unfold or my smooth UVs to just basically peel it apart. But that leaves us with a big seam in the center of the head. So what I'm going to do instead is cut along the sides of the head, merge the center together, and so I get this kind of T-shape where the top of the skull goes upwards and the side of the skull peels outwards. So earlier we talked about distortion. I'm going to click this button up here on the top of my toolbar, the colored checkerboard. And that will apply a colored checkerboard texture to my object. And I can use this to check the distortion of my UV. Since the checkerboard is a very predictable pattern, we'll know if it looks correct or not. So we can turn that button on or off whenever we need to see that pattern. It's a little bit easier than making our own checkerboard material. Now I've merged the neck to the head and I'm cutting the ears apart so that they sit separately. This will facilitate creating the texture in that area. And with that, all the different components of the body are done being unwrapped so I can turn my attention to the body as a whole. Now I'm gonna duplicate my arms and my legs and just flip them across the center line using a negative scale. And I've got my complete body here. And in my UV texture editor, I'm going to go to the image menu and turn on shade UVs. That gives me that blue and red background for the UV shells. And I'll combine my guy and I'll see that the color changes. Now it's kind of a purplish color. And the reason that that happens is because I've got an overlap of blue and red. And blue just means oriented correctly and red is oriented incorrectly. And to fix it, all I have to do is just select the red shells and use my mirror tools up on the top toolbar to flip them until they turn blue. And now that I've oriented everything correctly, I can merge together my mirrored components. So the legs I'll need to merge together at the front of the pelvis here, just using my move and sew. And then I'll just combine the torso in and I'm left with one final challenge. I need to lay out my UVs in such a way that they all fit into a single texture map. So I'll go into the polygons menu and choose the layout option. And generally we're going to go into the options of layout and just disable rotation, make sure that the scale settings are correct. We don't want the layout tool to make too many decisions for us because it usually makes the wrong ones. So I'll activate it and we'll see that it places all of my UVs into the single zero to one space. But while the layout tool is easy to use, it generally doesn't give us the best possible option. So what I find myself doing is just manually making edits to my UVs and then laying them out by hand. I'll turn on the checkerboard in the UV texture editor just to make sure that all of my UV shells have about the same level of pixel density. 
Again, that means that the squares on them are about the same size. And each one of these squares represents kind of a texture. So I'll fit my body into one of those squares and then I'll attach the head to the rest of the body and I'll put the head in its own square, indicating that each one of these parts of the body gets its own texture. So I'll have to assign a different material to the head and use a different texture on the head than I do on the body, for example. And now we're done with the manual method. Let's look at our second method, which is using the bonus tools. So we have to have the bonus tools installed and this will speed things up considerably. So I'm starting the same way that I did before, but this time I'm going to the bonus tools menu, choosing UV editing, and then I'm going to choose the auto unwrap UVs tool. And that will pop up a menu and I basically just hit enter tool and close to get started. And with the auto unwrap tool, all we have to do is define the seams where we want our UV seams to be on our object and the tool will do everything else. So here I'm defining a seam on the back of the head and I'll click the add borders button. And in this point, it's just a matter of selecting the edges as I did in the previous example and just adding borders. So going around the ears, going around the head, all these borders are the same thing. The difference is this tool is going to take care of all the projections for me. Once I've got all my borders selected, I'll click that continue button and then I can look in the UV texture editor to see the UVs that have been generated. And we'll see that they're almost the same as the UVs that I created in the first demonstration. All right, let's do the torso. I'll activate the auto unwrapping tool again. I'll select the seams down the side of the body and over the shoulders, and then I'll hit continue. And we'll see that it generates pretty good UVs. Things are off center and we may have to move and rotate them around, but overall it speeds the process up dramatically. And all we have to do is just repeatedly go in, apply the tool, select all the seams, and then the tool does the rest for us. So we'll skip ahead because the process is repeated over and over. And then like I did in the last example, I mirror the guy over, I combine them together, and then I have to lay out my UVs again as I did with the first process. Now let's look at our last method. We're gonna do the entire body at one time using our bonus tools and this will be even faster. I'm starting with my completed base mesh and I'll apply the auto unwrap UV tool. And again, I'll just select my object and start defining my seams. So we're using the exact same seams that we used on all the other examples. The difference here is that because it's the entire body, I have to be a lot more careful with my selections. So selecting an edge row on the bottom of the arm might go all the way up and around the torso and down into the leg. We just want to be very careful that we're defining the seams exactly where we need them. And now is a good time to review the placement of our seams. So we place our seams to reduce distortion on our mesh and we check distortion on our mesh with our checkerboard texture. And we also place seams to hide them. So texture seams can cause problems with noticeable gaps in the texture. So we want to hide them in places where the viewer is unlikely to see them. So the inseam of the leg, under the arm, the side of the body, these are all areas that aren't readily visible and they're covered up by other parts of the body. And this is why those seams are in the same locations on clothing for the exact same reason. We're hiding them from the viewer. Now a note about the hands and the feet, we can project these areas in multiple fashions. So there was the multiple plane fashion that we projected in the first example. Another way to do it is to split the fingers off. So create the seams at the base of the fingers and split them down the bottom so that we're unwrapping each finger as its own cylinder. And then we unwrap the hand, the palm, and the back of the hand as its own object. This does add more seams and it's probably only a good idea when we're using projection painting to make sure that we don't have any texture seam. And then once I'm done placing all my seams, I'll hit that continue button and the tool will automatically generate my UVs. Now the only downside to this method is that Maya will make some questionable choices as to the placement of our objects. So generally we're gonna have to go through and adjust the layout manually the way that we have before. Unfortunately, the auto layout tools just don't do a good job. For example, the legs are upside down and the arms are angled. 
Ideally, we want everything to be at 90 degree angles to the relationship with the world. At this point, our UVs are complete and we can start texturing or creating normal maps or displacement maps. On another note, I love making videos for this channel. I love the feedback that I get from you guys. And I'd like to be putting out two or three times as many videos per month. You guys can help support by contributing via fan funding directly to my channel. I'm James Taylor. Thanks for watching.